All right. All right, good. Cam and Mike. I can remember those names. That's good. Hey, wait a minute. You're Cameron, and you hold the microphone, and you're Mike, and you hold the camera. <sighs> Wasps of the genus and Cistroceras are distributed widely across the northern hemisphere and down into South America. There are about 116 species worldwide and 22 species in North America. The name Ancistroceras refers to the hooked last antennal segment of the males. In this video we will take a closer look at four species from eastern North America. Ancistroceras antilope, Ancistroceras adiabatis, Ancistroceras catskill, and Ancistroceras unifasciatus. Females of these solitary wasps make a linear nest in some hollow cavity, like a hollow twig. Females provision these nests with a variety of caterpillar prey, usually small hairless lepidopterans that are locally abundant. As many as 20 caterpillars are used to provide food for each developing wasp larvae. After the nest has been provisioned, the female lays a single egg, seals the chamber, and begins provisioning another chamber. The story of the North American Ancistroceras begins in 1798 in Herzbruck, Germany, where George Wolfgang Panzer wrote Elements of the Insect Fauna of Germany, with accompanying plates by the engraver Jacob Sturm. In this work, Panzer described Vespa antilope, a medium-sized wasp collected from Austria. Antilope is holarctic. It ranges across much of the northern hemisphere. In eastern North America, it is the largest cavity nesting wasp. It is black with many yellow markings, including two sinister eyes on its thorax and a banding pattern on its abdomen. Males are considerably smaller and share a similar marking pattern as the females. Males emerge first from the linear nest despite having been laid after the females. Matings between siblings are not uncommon, as males often wait at the nest entrance for the females to emerge. The size difference between males and females is quite noticeable. Females are generally longer than worker honeybees, while the males tend to be shorter. Remember, these wasps are able to lay eggs that, if fertilized, give rise to females, and if not, give rise to males. So females choose the gender of their offspring and can provision cells accordingly. Females appear to get more caterpillar prey than males. 38 years after George Panzer described antilope, the Belgian entomologist Constantin Westmeel in 1836, working at the Athenaeum of Brussels, created the taxon Ancistroceras as a subgenus of Odinerus. Sixteen years later, in 1852, the Swiss entomologist Henri de Saussure, working in Geneva, published a monograph of the solitary wasps. In this work, Saussure described several American Ancistroceras wasps he placed in the genus Odinerus, including one he named Catskill. Ancistroceras Catskill is similar to Antilope, but shorter and maybe stouter. Individuals in the north bear paler markings while those in the southern part of its range are more yellow. The males share a similar pattern as the females and, like all male Ancistroceras, have a solid yellow clypeus. Females have some yellow on their clypeus, but for the males the coloration is complete. In the same work, Saussure described another American Ancistroceras from a single male specimen. It had been collected in the Carolina region of the continent, and Saussure named it Adiabatis. Ancistroceras adiabatis is similar to the others, but more slender. Females also sport a yellow metanodal band that creates a smiley face on their thorax, which is usually the first clue to their identity. Males are again similar to the females, but lack the smile of the females. It is unusual that the females should sport more yellow than the males, but here only two sinister eyes peek at you, not the cheerful smile of the female. 
The last species we'll look at was also described by Saussure in 1852, and he gave it the name Unifasciatus. And Cistroceras unifasciatus is smaller than the other three we've looked at. And maybe it's just me, but to me, its abdomen has a brown, kind of dark chocolate appearance, where the other species are jet black. The yellow of its legs are also not bright yellow, but more of a yellow-brown tone. Males follow the pattern of the females with more extensive yellow markings. Nesting observations indicate this species has a preference for making its nest cells in abandoned mud dauber nests. The first serious attempt at a revision of the genus came in 1925 when the Belgian-born Joseph Beckhardt, working at Harvard, took up the task. In his introduction, Beckhardt admits this will not be the final word on the genus, but the locality information and species descriptions make it quite valuable. Eighteen years later, in 1943, Beckhardt published again on the genus, this time with new information and a clearer picture of the scope of Ancestroceras. His new key was improved and can still be useful today, provided you change his many outdated names. His illustrations are good, but not terribly helpful in differentiating species. 65 years after Bickhart, in 2008, Matthias Buck at the University of Guelph in Ontario created the Identification Atlas of the Vespidae of the Northeastern Nearctic Region. It includes 14 species of Encistroceras and should be consulted first. If you have specimens from southwestern North America, you will have to return to Beckhart 1943. Of course, any effort to determine a specimen's identity should start with range maps. Unfortunately, all four of these species, and a few more, are often found living together in eastern woodlands. Their lengths are not very revealing, but at the extremes, antilope females tend to be larger than Adiabatis, which are about the same size as Catskill, and Unifasciatus is rather small. This pattern will only reveal itself with a long series of each. Their faces won't reveal any species, but there are some helpful clues here. As you can see, there, are, there is some variability in female Clypeus coloration, but all the males have a solid yellow Clypeus. This coloration is too variable on its own, but it can be used to build a case for one species over another. Colors on the scutellum and metanotum are not always trustworthy, but they will glare at you until you address them. A diabatus has cheerful eyes and a clear smile. Catskill has sinister eyes and an equivocal smile. You're not sure you can trust it. Antilope never smiles at all, and her eyes reveal she's pure evil. And Unifasciatus, well, she, she must be asleep. When we include the males, we see there are some noticeable differences within the same species. Adiabatus males might be happy, but they never smile. Antilope males have two small spots, if they are lucky. Unifasciatus obviously refers to the single-banded nature of its abdomen, but a structural character that is useful is the median furrow on the second sternite. It separates Unifasciatus from the rest of the genus. The other species will have varying degrees of something in the center of their second sternite, but less pronounced than in Unifasciatus. For Antilope, there is a pronounced shelf-like ventrolateral rim of their propodium. This creates an acarinarium for which mites are transported by the females. Although all the Ancestroceras have ridges, the ones on Antilope females are extended. Again, this is a degree character, so use with caution. Catskill has a structural character that can be useful. It has a costal scale with a peculiar shape. This structure was very hard to get to and photograph, but it might be very useful for a particularly difficult specimen. For the males, there is variation in the last flagellar segment, the hook, their namesake, and Cistroceras means rear-facing horn, and the one on Catskill is decidedly longer than the one on Antilope. The one on Catskill reaches the next segment, Antilope's doesn't. Well, that should get you started. Good luck! Special thanks go to the Biodiversity Heritage Library, a free resource for taxonomists that allows access to a treasure trove of scientific literature. Look for them online. And also, a big thank you to the good folks at Discover Life, a free resource providing all sorts of taxonomic information. 
All the range maps used in this video were gleaned from their site and so much more. Whose dog is this? <laughs>